Welcome back, Happy Fabricators. So if you didn't read the description, what we're doing today is reviewing and testing the cheapest weld positioner on Amazon. So this guy came in at $310. Now you might be like, wait a minute, I've seen one for $290, but that one's still got $30 shipping. So either way you swing it, it's $310. Now this machine was not sponsored by anyone. I spent my cold hard cash on this and I have some projects coming up that a positioner might make a little smoother and easier. So let's see if it's worth it or not. So first impressions, it's a lot smaller than I thought it was for some reason. I mean, they had some dimensions in the description, but it was still kind of vague. What we have that came with it, we have a very primitive instruction manual. It does have a wire and dime grab kind of in there. We have a 110 power cord, it's supposed to be a 50 Hertz setup and it is roughly 70 inches long or 177 centimeters. And we have a foot pedal with a three pin screw on connector, goes into the front of the control box here. And this guy is roughly 75 inches long or 190 centimeters. And then we have the unit itself. This chuck is supposed to be a three inch chuck that it comes with. It comes with two little handles for the chuck, kind of cool, quick tighten in and out chuck. Don't know if you can see that opening up or not. And this guy rotates 90 degrees, can lock at 90 or anywhere in between. But, I'm dropping stuff. But as far as construction of it, first impression, it's actually pretty solid. It's all bent or press broke. Probably, I'm gonna guess 11 gauge, mild steel. It's all powder coated. It's got a little 24 volt motor here with a big gear so we get a good gear reduction there but i'm kind of curious about this chuck here they said it was a three inch chuck and i'm not quite believing that so in my mind the chuck is what it can open up to on the inside and it looks like the insides of this jaws are inch and a half maybe inch and three eighths on the inside of these jaws if you're going to the outside Maybe that's where they're going three inches to the outside of this chuck. Let me grab some. So if this is a three inch V band, I guess if you pinch it from the outside, I suppose that works. But in my mind, a three inch chuck, you can grab something that is three inches in diameter from the outside. So I don't think this is technically a three inch chuck. So it looks like on the side here, we have a on off switch. And then I assume this is directional probably left right rotation or clockwise counterclockwise orientation so let's get this guy plugged in and do some tests and see how it works okay so the first thing i want to do is run some tests and see what its actual speeds are going to be and we're going to hit go and our pedal at the same time And there we are, roughly a minute and 30 seconds for one continuous rotation on the slowest speed. And now we're gonna crank it up and do the fastest speed. Let go. And just over four seconds for one rotation.
Okay, so there's definitely a learning curve to this, but the results we got are not too bad. I had a couple hiccups there. We got some pretty good results. It's definitely a learning curve, something that I'm gonna have to get used to. These are the very first four welds that I made on it, and obviously these weld qualities are not due to the machine. It's due to my learning this style with the machine. So my final thoughts with this thing, I think it's gonna do the job. So first off, I'm gonna go over what I learned just using it, the cons and the pros of it. So what I learned with this thing is, number one, make sure you have a ground clamp on this thing. Don't be dumb like me. I forgot to hook my ground clamp up here and that means it was grounding through the joints and whatever else in this machine. And I'm lucky that I didn't fry it already. So I went and rigged together a quick little magnetic ground on the thing so that I can slap it on and I know when it's sitting on the table I'm grounded to something solid and I don't have to worry about forgetting to hook that up. Uh, the other thing I learned is it'd definitely be easier to use sitting down. I do most of my welding standing up and with running two separate pedals it can be tricky. Normally with one pedal you can balance with one and feather the other one. So when you're sitting on your heels trying to feather two pedals things can get interesting. I definitely need to learn what the speeds are and I'll probably put some hash marks because there's no like one, two, three or designated marks on there. So I'll probably end up figuring out what works well for me and marking those out. Another thing I learned is I definitely need to make a steady rest. So this thing is kind of up here, not very good where you can like rest your elbows and stuff. And you see how I'm stacking stuff up and I definitely need to make something that I can mount to the table and maneuver maybe a bar like this or something like that, that I can use as a steady rest to feed and move with, that would make things a lot easier. Another thing I thought about while I was using it is it is a momentary switch, and it might be nice since I do stand up and weld a lot, if I made it a on off switch so I could click it, it would run, take my foot off of it, click it again, and turn it off. But we'll see how it works when I get to using it. So the pros for this unit. Number one is the price. You can't really beat the price on this thing. It's pretty much the cheapest one out there. And I know there's a lot of people that have the mindset of buy once, cry once. And to some extent, I agree with that. I agree you should buy the best quality that you can afford at the moment. But if it prevents you from doing a job, don't wait around to save up for the bigger, better machine. Get a machine that'll do the job and then you can make that money and use that money to get your bigger and better machine. If you sit around saving up for a machine forever, you're going to sit around forever. So let's say figuratively speaking that you wanted this thousand dollar positioner this job opportunity came up to you as a $1,500 job, but you don't have a positioner that, because you have to save up for it. You could buy something small like this, provided it is sizable enough to do the job that you're looking at, knock the job out, throw this thing away, buy your $1,000 positioner, and still have $200 in your pocket. And that's where I feel like you have to weigh your options for that buy once, cry once mentality. But enough ranting on that. The other pros to this thing is it's pretty solid. It's all made out of like, I think it's 11 gauge sheet metal. All the knobs and buttons on it actually feel pretty solid considering it's such a low dollar machine. The table on the top of this thing is 3 16th inch steel. You could always upgrade this chuck to a larger chuck. I believe this is a 180 millimeter table on the top. So you can upgrade to that. Super easy to position this thing within 90 degrees. You can tighten it down. You can mount this thing on the side of your bench, wherever. And then the cons for this unit. Number one, it is pretty small. So that could be a make it or break it thing. Maybe that's better for what you need and maybe it's not big enough to do the job. Number two, I don't think this chuck was provided as advertised as a three inch chuck. The ID of the chuck can really only hold about an inch and three eighths, maybe an inch and a half. So I don't think that was advertised very accurately. But besides the chuck and it being a little smaller than I was expecting, I really don't have too much to complain about. It's gonna do the job until I need something bigger and then I can sell it or give it away or whatever. So I've had a couple different people ask me how they can help the channel out. And there's multiple ways that you can do that at no extra cost to you. One of the ways is if you do your Amazon shopping through some of the links down in the description, you click on one of those links and it'll open up Amazon to a certain product and then you can do all your browsing through there. That will give me a small commission at no extra cost to you. And I'm putting all those commissions back into the channel in purchasing things to be able to make more content with. The other thing you can do is hit the like button. It'll let the algorithm know that you like this video and other people might like it too, and it'll share it more. 
Another thing you can do is share this video physically with a friend. You can send links of this video and that will also help the algorithm out too. So as always, thanks for watching. If you want to see more fabrication content, click some of the links that are going to pop up here. If you want to get notified of upcoming videos, hit the subscribe button and go build something, guys.